I got so many comments and mails from you, so I decided today to show you the whole setup of my 5 kilo payload high fly gimbal. Actually, I'm using the Basecam Electronics board, the Alexmos board with the latest software and firmware, it's 2.4 B6. So I will show you the whole setup, the whole, all, this, all the single parts and I will even explain you some of the um, setting of the software and how to manage this all. So thank you for watching. In here is my latest version 2.2 board, so I will open it up for you now. As you can see I'm using these ferret rings but I never had any problems even without the rings, so you don't need them. But I have them on all the uh, motors. I bought this uh, plastic box and as you can see, with my uh, soldering iron I did a lot of holes in it. Here you can see what I've done with my plastic box. I've done all these holes in it and I think it's working quite well. As you can see it is the latest version, version 2.2 and all the three motors, the pitch, the jaw and roll motor are all connected to the main board, not to the extension board. So you don't need to connect the jaw motor to the extension board. It's fine to connect the jaw motor to the main board. And this is just a quick view from the bottom. As you can see I've plugged in the USB cable all the time. You will use it very often so don't deplug it. The special thing about the HiFly gimbal is that you have two pitch motors as you can see. But there's only one connector on the Basecamp Electronics board. So you have to split this connector into two. But this is quite easy. The orange cable is coming from the board and the two black cables are going to the motors. So I just soldered a little adapter. It's just about splitting the three cables into six. That's it. And then you need to connect the motor cables in opposite directions as you can see. Because the motors they are pointing towards each other and not into the same direction. One problem of the high fly gimbal is the base plate. I think it's quite rubbish. You can put it in here. This is no problem at all. But all these holes are not centered, only this single one. So how to mount a camera on this? I have here my Sony FS100 and I can use only this single screw to fix it. And it's not very stable, but at least it works. And so I decided to ask a friend and he did a new 3D model for me. And this uh, new model um, with a centered hole I will send it to the seller and hope he will do it for me. Here you can see where I placed my sensor. I think it's quite a good position. Here you can see one of the two small pitch motors. They are from DYS and the model is G508200. And the big motors, the jaw motor and the roll motor, it's model BGM8108150. Now I will show you all the single parts for the gimbal. Here's my camera, the Sony FS100, but I'm not recording internally on SD card. I'm recording externally here on the Atomos Ninja 2 recorder. In here is the latest Xandis 2 Extreme SSD with 480 GB. It makes no noise at all, so you won't damage your footage. How to get the signal from the camera to the recorder? It just I'm just using this very flexible HDMI cable. It's from the German seller Kabel Direct. And because it's so flexible, it won't interfere with your pitch motors. Actually, I'm using this angle too. I just plug it in the output, the HDMI output, and then the cable in like this, but you will see it later if I show you the whole setup. For the audio, you cannot mount any microphones on the top of your camera. It's just not working with the gimbal. It's too small. 
what I'm doing is I'm just using my Rode NTG2 and my Zoom H4n as an interface. I tried to get the signal from the Rode NTG2 directly into my Atomos Ninja 2 but I cannot get enough gain so I'm using this always together with a preamp it's the Rode D-Power plug getting the signal from the H4n with this standard jack cable to the Atomos recorder just use the analog input. As you can see I'm using the kit lens the 18 to 200 it's an autofocus lens it's quite good but I would actually love to use one of my primes. The problem is you cannot control the focus while you are recording with the gimbal so it's not possible at the moment to use any primes but there's coming out an electronic follow focus called silencer from 24 shots and with this uh, electronic follow focus you will be able to control your focus directly at the handle of the gimbal. As ND filter I just have this Vario ND filter from Helio Pan. It's a German company again. It's working fine so I stick to it. The last thing I would like to show you is the battery. It's a 10,400 milliamp battery. You don't need that big battery, a smaller one will do the job, it's no problem. I found out if I fully charge it with 12.6 volts, the Basecam electronic board will make some clicking noise. So if you don't want this to happen, just charge your battery to 11.9, 12.0 volts and you won't hear anything. So now as you can see the gimbal is fully set up but before I will explain you the software I will just give you a quick overview about the gimbal. As you can see the Zoom H4n is ready and here on the Ninja 2 you can see the gain. Here you can see how the HDMI cable is connected. Just press on monitor and you can see what the FS100 is giving out through the HDMI all is ready to record now. Of course, before we can start, we need to check if the camera is balanced. Here you can see it's just working fine. If you want to know how to balance the camera, just watch my balancing tutorial. Remind, before you plug your USB cable to your computer, always check if the battery is plugged in, because otherwise you will damage your electronic board. So what you need to do now is just to make sure that your camera is quite balanced and then plug in the battery. The system will give you some seconds to check all if it's fine. Okay, it's running. So here you can see the steady cam working. The camera it's a little bit shivering because the pitch axis, the pitch motors are not perfectly set up. So we will have a closer look on this soon. The follow motors, the draw axis. very smooth but if you see closely there is a little bit shivering so it's not perfectly the PID settings are not correct so before you can connect your USB cable to your computer. Make sure that your battery is connected and the gimbal is running. Click connect and wait a little bit. Okay, now it's working. And the first thing I will do, I will stop my motors and bring this to balance and then just click 
calibrate just to make sure it's really calibrated. Okay. So as we have seen there, the pitch motors are a little bit shivering, so you just need to increase the D value of the pitch and then it should be fine. So if you are not happy with the response of your gimbal, if it's not stabilizing the picture perfectly, you just need to increase the P value of one or the other axis. But then uh, what can happen is that the axis will begin to shiver as just my pitch axis did. So you need to increase the D value of the axis and uh, yeah, and it will stop shivering. So you will be happy again. Here in the follow mode setup you can just set up the speed. I set my roll speed to zero because I don't want the roll axis to follow the pitch axis to one and the jaw axis to two. Okay, and with this setup and with this PID settings we will try again to move the camera. Okay, here you can see the gimbal again. I increased the D value of the pitch axis and I hope it's working now. I cannot see any shivering again. Okay, should be fine. Here you can see my HDMI cable. I think it's quite okay. It's not interfering with the pitch axis at all because it's a flex cable. So this should be okay. The audio is recorded with the H4N zoom and my Rode NTG2 and I plugged it into my Ninja 2 Atomos recorder. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going out and recording some footage for you.